Buy, sell or rent your property with Century 21 and you could win a brand new two bedroom apartment on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. Visit c21win.com.au for your chance to win. Welcome back into the show. Joining me tonight, Nathan Gallagher, New South Wales State Manager for realestate.com.au and joined now by James Barlow, Managing Director of Century 21, Sydney Commercial. Warm welcome to you. Thank uh, you, it's, it's an area we're just saying off air that you know we kind of need to perhaps drill down into more and hopefully that'll be the case in, in successive weeks. But sure. let's just perhaps set the scene on it. Uh, you know, Nathan, I, I suppose you know, more homes that are established versus uh, new? I mean, what, what, what are the trends like at the moment? I, mean, well, I think established yeah, homes are always going to be popular, but mm -hmm. I think the, um, the new home market is expanding as affordability is an issue. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that as you start to go west, as people are searching for better affordability, new mm -hmm. homes are becoming more uh, popular. Mm -hmm. Thinking around this? Yeah, I just I just second what Nathan's saying there. It's mm -hmm. it's the it's the opportunity to actually find something in a very competitive marketplace. Mm -hmm. And when stock was considerably tighter towards the end of last year, mm -hmm. now there's an opportunity maybe if they wish to go a little bit further out, they can find something new and exciting. In By a new which community. we could be even talking about estates. I mean yeah, uh, what, sure. what's the what's the general uh, pipeline looking like on that score? What, uh, what, what drives that? Yeah, look, Kellyville, the ponds, mm. those sort of areas are, are, are attractive to buyers, but they've got a good balance between infrastructure, recreational facilities, transportation, mm -hmm. uh, and, and local amenities, which developers know that. They get it right and mm. they build it to meet the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we even talk about supermarkets. What's that, that whole yeah. infrastructure piece? Is that is that kind of a prerequisite for the I, estate I, itself? I think so, Carson. I think what, when people are looking to build into a new community, they're looking for those key infrastructure pieces, mm -hmm. and they're looking for new, fresh, and exciting. Now, these things don't happen overnight. It mm -hmm. can be ten years right. of planning to bring up these areas. But but now is a great time, as Nathan said, in the northwest. And I can tell you, if you're if you're struggling for something in town in established homes, and mm -hmm. you're willing to maybe travel forty minutes or so to work. Mm. There's all sorts of opportunity in the northwest for you. Is there a missing link? Because just as you think of Japan and these incredible network of railways mm. crossing and enabling people to work uh, and commute mm. with ease without even thinking twice, mm. you know, what's the missing link in this well, market to that point? If I, if I may, you're, yeah. you're about to find that out, I guess, mm. with, with the uh, the Sydney Metro into the northwest, where right. you know it's it's a significant infrastructure project, 8.3 billion dollars spent yes. by state government over eight stations, right. and there's going to be a train every two and a half minutes in mid 2019. Mm. So we haven't really seen anything like that, and that of course will get those new residents to places like Parramatta. Yes. Or straight into the city via Epping. Right. So, so you know, we're talking about light speed to work yeah. uh, and an ability to take new communities into employment. Mm. Are we finding though that even where these train lines are slated to be going in, that there's actually going to be a seamless integration of the existing pretty clogged uh, side streets? What happens? I mean, are you going to have standalone car parks? Who's going to run those? Because you know, you've got to get from point A home to the station somehow. Yeah. It's either going to be a newly integrated bus network, which we haven't been told about, or well, where's the parking? Uh, Carson, who knows where it's going to go? Like, if you, if, you, if you watch what Google's planning, if you watch what some of these big uh, companies are planning, they're talking driverless cars, mm. they're talking a whole new way of doing commuter, uh, you know... Uh, they're that, talking that, but is there, is there evidence of that happening? Or is it just... it's, it's, it's happening overseas, it's happening in parts of Asia, they're, <laughs> they're testing, you yeah. know, drive, you know, f cars that fly, tax flying taxis in Dubai, so it's... Right, well, there's, population of how many though? I mean, you're in a desert. Uh, <laughs> it's slightly I, less uh, of a risk, but yeah, I, I, take it. they're I, testing I, it. Yes. It's going to be challenging, isn't it? Mm. I mean, we've already got roads under stress, especially in those precincts that we've mentioned tonight. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's just so critical for that future development in those areas to mm -hmm. raise the density mm -hmm. in that walkable distance to rail to try and make people who have driven give up the car or those coming to the area not actually buy a car. Is it ultimately though as much a perception and almost a, a badge of we've arrived that the, that the CBD mm. in Sydney, for instance, or in Melbourne, uh, that still rates as pride of place and to decamp mm. and to be the first mover advantage idea might have a measure of appeal but it will never trigger a wholesale shift by the big names and until that happens, how do you get the shift in, in workplace 
that really needs to occur to, to, to basically spread this notion out from the sensor? So it's a good question. Australia's, I guess, got different planning regulations, certainly to the United States, where it's a little bit more spread out, like you're talking about. So mm. it's a little bit different. But we, I think we saw some initial stages of that. If you look at maybe Eastern Creek a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. where they made an effort to grab the big blue collar working workforces and they actually combine them with the white white collar workforces from the city for the first time ever in state of the art buildings. Mm -hmm. So I think it's happening, but it is a little bit more slowly than other areas. We think of the, the two hottest markets and, and mm. entry points now. What is left, simply put? What remains half affordable versus you're married to the bank manager for 30 years? Uh, look, I think there's still parts of uh, the East Coast that are regionalised but still have um, all the boxes that people want to tick. Places like Newcastle, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of development there, but it's still you can commute to the major cities. It's got great lifestyle opportunities. So those sort of regional markets, I think, definitely provide affordability and a lifestyle that's still not too far from the key cities. Mm -hmm. Thoughts as well about going outside the key cities. Just what is the landscape like? What is, what's, what's going to keep them even half alive? It seems that there's a big divide. Mm. What, what do you say? Look, I think, I think look, in regional yeah. markets, I think, yeah. you know, from an investment point of view, mm. people might see cheap housing and say, what a great opportunity, but don't be fooled by a price that unfortunately may have zero capital growth. Mm -hmm. So I think mm. that be careful about buying just on a price tag because mm. your history mm. about capital growth is so critical for investing. So don't be fooled by a sticker price. Well, well to that end, in commercial, the, the fact that so yeah. much has been requisitioned anecdotally for mm. resi, Mm. Over time, what had been earmarked, mm. uh, you know, for industrial, mm. how much of that remains, frankly? No, well, not a huge amount. No, I was just going to touch on these regional areas, yeah, totally. Carson, which I think yeah. is quite quite interesting. Is that it's funny how it can spread out from these sort of main areas and city mm. areas. Just as an example, I think I think if you look at Gosford, I think it's mm. a tremendous sleeper. Um, you know, it's it's DA'd for about three thousand units to come into the market in the next few years. Now that's staggering. Mm -hmm. I mean, and once again, we're not talking too far out of the city, are we, really? Mm -hmm. You can still get into town if you have to. There's still a lot of nice people up there making that commute. They've also got three lanes if they wish, so... Right, OK. That, you know, but, but those sort of areas, I think, are going to really come on in the next so phase. So it's, it's DA green-lighted in that sense, but mm. critically, who's going to take the first step? Who needs mm. to basically leg legitimise it mm. to get broad uptake? Uh, who, who are the names? Who are the... Uh, well, I think the first thing is to enable those areas outside of the key cities. It's, it's infrastructure mm. and it's transport mm. and it's actually freeing up those main arterial roads to get people to and mm. from. Uh, the Central Coast is a great opportunity, but we all know what happens when a, car, when a, mm. a, a, a truck jackknifes and all Absolutely. of a sudden things turn upside down. So, mm. um, you know, there has to be contingency plans for that as well. Yeah. I think what you'll find with that type of development, if, if we're looking sort of uh, in Sydney or Sydney surrounds, is mm. when you track sort of m maybe some of the larger developers and watch where they're starting to put some of their investment, and, and a lot of them have moved up to Gosford recently. And mm -hmm. So there are signs there that they're obviously, based on 30 years of research, mm -hmm. that's a good market for them to move into. We must shuffle onwards, sure. uh, unfortunately. Time is always against us. The National Auction Clearance Rates, we touched mm. on this before, but let's just sort of see on a chart view... Sure. Yeah, look, very s incredibly strong there, Carson. Mm. I mean, look, 77.8% slightly down from last week of 786 but, you know, reflective mm. upon last year, we're at 68.1%, so oh. again, very strong. L led by Sydney at 805 uh, you know, as always, but closely followed by Melbourne. And I think what's, what's also worthy of note here is Brisbane. I know mm. the guys have talked about it in previous weeks. Brisbane's hanging around 60% there, seems quite steady. Mm. And also Canberra at over 70%. I mean, it's all strong, isn't it? And that's a figure, the 70% on Canberra that you would, you've been tracking. Is that, has that deviated no, significantly? No, it, it's been quite consistent okay. and that's what we've found. So, mm. you know, again, versing sort of 12 months ago, we think that's a very strong result and shows the appetite for the markets. Let's move over, switch to homes advertised for sale. Sure. Uh, so this is an interesting one. So what we've talked about tonight is trying to create, possibly nationally, uh, more supply for those that are out there looking for opportunity. And, and so we've had our first decline in about five or six weeks there. It's only a very small one of 0.021%. And so over the next few weeks, this is a key metric that we'd like to keep an eye on. If the uh, viewers are looking to buy, then of course we want a little bit more stock in the market, so we're looking for some growth there. It's always this kind of conundrum when you take a step back and think, 
we, 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 we get more stock in the market. The banks that are basically mm -hmm. the owners of this property mm -hmm. don't really want themselves, do they, to see their values uh, mm -hmm. going south rather than north? Sure. I mean, they're, they're the, under, the underlying owners mm -hmm. until you've repaid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the cynic would say mm -hmm. this is all a kind of a very, it's a virtuous circle to keep it as it is. Sure. Uh, do, you, do you see merit in that argument or not? Look, I probably see a little bit of merit in there, but I'm probably siding with the frustrated uh, purchases that are out there that maybe had a run for things before Christmas and didn't find quite enough stock in the market for Well, if them. you can't get on that particular track, the resi rent price moves. Can we end sure. on this one? Because that's yeah. kind of your default uh, second option. Yeah, absolutely. So, so a little bit of an increase there, and nationally very interesting, just up by just under 1% at 0.093%. Look, they've been climbing, you know, uh, across the country and certainly driven by Sydney and Melbourne, with, uh, with Tasmania struggling a little bit there, but overall a 0.93% increase. Wow. Okay. One imagines that maybe Tassie picks up, as we were saying before. Yeah, once absolutely. Once uh, the peaking in these markets, it's time for the catch-up kid. Yes, to come, come along. Ahead. Thank you so much, Thank James Barlow, Managing Director, Century 21 Commercial in Sydney, and to you, Nathan Gallagher, New South Wales Property Manager, realestate.com.au. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Carson. Cheers. Thank you, Carson. Thanking you for your company. Normal service, I'm reliably informed next week with Chris Gray is back. So do join us then. Of course, you can. The information featured in this program is general in nature and therefore should not be relied upon. Guests appearing on the program may have commercial arrangements with some of the companies mentioned. Before making any investment, insurance or financial planning decisions, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you.